Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I thought I'd bring you guys one more deck profile for today, uh, especially because this is actually a strategy I've been excited to bring to you guys for quite a while. Um, so I'm, it's basically an update on my Medulci deck, a deck I haven't really pick, picked up on in quite a long while. And honestly, um, we just got some new support in the Infinite Forbidden. I tried to go to the Sneak Peek yesterday, but unfortunately they sold out. But luckily I was able to get my hands on all the new uh, Medulci cards. And I gotta say the new support is pretty crazy because like, now the deck actually has more means to interact with the opponent, especially during their turn, because, like, that's kind of, like, one of the biggest flaws with Medulci. It's, like, it's a deck that you that's pretty good at um, OTKing, but it only works best when it's during your own turn, and honestly, you don't have much to disrupt your opponent other than just hand traps. And now the deck actually has something that can make that work. Yeah, we had a couple... We did have a, a trap card that also interacted well with the opponent, but again, unless you have the right setup, it's not as great as it could be. But again, like now we have more means to like disrupt the opponent. The combos are actually pretty nuts. And we also got like a new Link monster, which actually adds a lot of cool um, power to to the deck. And yeah, I just really like what the deck can do now. So I figured I'd just share with you guys what I came up with and let's go and get started. So the main deck is 40 cards, uh, playing three copies of Magellan. This is one of your main stars. If anything, this deck actually has a lot of different starters. And, and depending on like which one you open, you can't really go wrong on how you go about your plays. But if this card is um, if this card is normal or flip summoned, you can add one Medulci monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, next, we got three copies of Angeli. I think this is the one that's becoming more expensive now, especially because I believe it only has like one or two, or actually uh, two or three printings at most. I think it's just two, if I'm not mistaken. But you can correct me if I'm wrong. But you can tribute this card for cost, special summon one Medulci monster from your deck, and if you do, it cannot be destroyed by battle, uh, but shuffle into the deck during the end phase. Not too, not too worrisome considering that you're most likely going to use whatever you have as material for something like a Link Summon or an XC Summon, so that's the whole thing about it. Uh, next up, three copies of Medulci Petting Sessor. Um, if you have no monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is special summon, you can special summon one Medulci monster from your hand or your deck, except itself. And if you do, increase this, level, this card's level by one. In which case, you're going to use this to summon out the Pudding Sis. That way, they, you have an easy rank five just like that. Uh, next up, two copies of Medulci. Hoot Kate, probably my personal favorite. I just love this, his little design. But um, if this card in... Um, I'm sorry, uh, you can banish, target one monster in your graveyard, banish it, and if you do, special summon one Medulci monster from your deck, except itself. In which case, the one you're always going to summon out off of his effect, the majority of the time, is going to be two copies of Messengelato. Um, if you special summon this card, um, you can uh, add one Medulci spell or trap from your deck to your hand, and you must control a face-up Medulci beast monster to resolve this effect, in which case, who cake is your beast monster. So, yeah, these two go in tangent with one another. Uh, the only real brick of the deck is the one Medulci Pudding Sis, but you, you definitely want to run it at least one just so you can bring it off at the effect of a uh, Petting Sessor. So yeah, one Pudding Sis is pretty good. But it's also got a uh, a really uh, interesting interaction during the battle phase, or rather after damage calculation of this card battles an opponent's monster. You can target one card on your opponent's, on your opponent's side of the field and then destroy it, so it can't come up every now and then. Alright, so that rounds up the uh, Medulci monsters for the... Uh, for my side engine, I am running the Vernus Sylph engine. I'm playing three copies of Vernus Sylph of Flourishing Hills. So this is actually an interesting engine because like these guys are essentially earth monsters and so are the Medulcis, and they actually have some pretty good synergy. But um, but the Vernus Sylphs have, have this uh, gimmick where they discard themselves plus one monster or another Vernus Sylph card. And then for this one, you can add one Vernus Sylph card from your deck to your hand, except itself. And then you could special summon one earth monster from your graveyard. So they all basically do something just like this. Next up, two copies of Vernus Sylph of uh, Misting Seedlings. Some people play this at three and this one at two. I like I, I like to go vice versa because this one's the searcher for the Vernus Sylphs. But for this one, if you discard this and one other monster, you can search out any one earth fairy monster. And then you can special summon a earth fairy monster uh, from your deck. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, you can special summon one Earth monster from your grave. Sorry, sorry I read, reread the text twice. But um, yeah, like I said, they, they're all basically monster reburn for your Earth monsters, and that's pretty nice. And of course, I'm playing the one bear. This is the one that just draws you a card, but also, you know, um, but also uh, you can target one Vernus Self monster you control and make it, uh, give it a second attack during each battle phase. But you're never going to really use that too much 
because again, you just mo mostly just need this, mo mostly need these to be your uh, monster reborn cards, basically. But this one also, you know, especially summons an earth monster from your graveyard too, so it's pretty cool. And that's it for that engine. All right, so now moving on to my hand trap lineup, you know, three ash, of course. Uh, double effect failure. I wanted to run three, but I didn't. I didn't want to go past forty cards. Three imperm, you know, pretty standard stuff. I do have more hand traps on the side deck, and uh, and you'll see like as to why I run so many on the side because I am playing a very certain card in the main deck. Um, three copies of Pot of Prosperity, one of each of the uh, Madolchi spells, like one Chateau, one Salon, which thankfully for with the way the deck is now, you only need one Salon now. You don't really need to play like multiples of these. And this card still only has one printing, surprisingly. I thought it would have been in Rarity Collection, but nope, it, it missed another printing, so. Uh, but, and it is pretty expensive too, but again, you only need just the one. Uh, one Madolchi ticket. This card's gonna resolve a lot more now, again, thanks to the new support. So definitely happy with that. Uh, three crossout designator. So this is actually a, one of the decks where you do want to main deck this card, especially because like another thing, another flaw with uh, Madolchi is that they lose to basically every freaking hand trap. And depending on like, like yeah, you can definitely recover on if depending on like which one hits you. But there are certain ones where like they could basically just end your whole turn. So like I just want to be willfully prepared against the, those kind of things. So I feel like crossout designator plus the one call by the grave, of course. Uh, definitely helps out a lot, so that way I can push through my combos. Uh, next, one copy of uh, Madolce Promenade. This is essentially a uh, another form of uh, Imperm, and it's searchable too. You can target one face-up card your opponent controls and one Madolce monster you control, or in your graveyard, negate the effects of that opponent's card until the end of the turn, and if you do, return your monster back to your hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Madolce Exceeds monster you control, attach one Madolce monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard to it as material. So... Promenade actually does quite a lot of things. Uh, might bump it back up to two, but for now I think one is just fine. Uh, but moving on, I'm playing the one new Madolce Dessert. This one's basically Get Out, but if anything, I think this is way better than Get Out. You can target two effect monster on the field, including one Madolce monster, so you're, te set, you're technically targeting three monsters. Um, and then um, you return the effect monsters to the hand or extra deck. Then you special summon one Madolce monster from your hand or your extra deck. Uh, with attack then or equal to the original attack points of those returned monsters. So like, yeah, you, you basically return your Madolce monster to do this and just bring out an Xyz monster. Also, uh, if a Madolce uh, card is shuffled back from the graveyard into the deck or extra deck, while this card is in your graveyard except during the damage step, you can attach this card to the Xyz monster you control. And yeah, it's just like basically adding a free material. Um, that way and it, it kind of cycles itself out over and over but of course you can only use uh, one effect of this card per turn and only once that turn all right so now moving on to the extra deck as for the extra deck i'm going to start off with the with two of the new uh Madolce queen tira phrase so it's basically the next uh upgrade to Madolce queen tira masu which go and just bring out those i'm only playing two of this now because like um in order to bring this out you need to have a Queen Tiramisu, and both have basically to do the exact same thing, but the only difference now is that uh, Tira Phrase can actually activate during your opponent's turn, so it's a quick effect. So, but again, the effects are basically the same, where you detach uh, one material, target two Madochi cards in your graveyard, shuffle them back into your deck, and if you do, shuffle back uh, the same number of cards your opponent controls, and this does not target. So yeah, Tira Phrase and Queen Tiramisu, excellent cards, I definitely like these. Next up, Playing three copies of um, Madolce Pudding Princess or Pudding Pudding Sis Chocolate Ala Mode. Uh, we all know what this card does. Basically, um, whenever you whenever you shuffle back one of your uh, Madolce cards, you can detach a material, especially summon one Madolce monster from your deck in attack mode or in face down defense, depending on what it is. And once per turn, you can target one Madolce card in your graveyard, shuffle it into to, into the deck. So uh, that's basically, and it's not a hard one to per turn, so you can basically. If you can get multiple of these, you can kind of like just spam it. Playing three copies of Glass Souffle, this card's actually pretty good too. Um, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, then target one Madolce monster on the field. This turn, it it's unaffected by your opponent's monster effects. And if a Madolce card is sent to the graveyard while this card is on the field, you can shuffle up to two cards in the graveyard back into your deck. So it's just a good way to recur your resources, you know. 
I'm playing two copies of Madolce Fresh Sistart, you know, not too bad, but this has been the only Link monster we've had up to this point. We now have the new uh, Madolce Mini Meow Caroons, and I gotta say, I love what this card can do. Two plus effect monsters, including a Madolce monster, so pretty easy to make. If this card is Link Summon, you can add one Madolce card from your deck to your hand, and then you can target one monster in your graveyard, special summon one Madolce monster from your hand, and if you do, shuffle that target back into your deck. Also, you can't activate anything for the rest of the turn except Madolce monsters, but I mean, that's kind of okay, because uh, a majority of our deck is Madolce's. So yeah, like this card just does so much for you. And the only other monster I'm playing on the extra deck is one Alsa. It's an Earth monster. It's generic for this strategy, and it's just really good for follow-up, so I figured why not. All right, so that's it for the extra deck. Now for the side deck, as I mentioned, I am running several different hand trips on the side, and not only are they just good in general for this format, but they're also good as cross-out targets. But the big one for sure, you know, three copies of Control and Lockwork, because again, I'm kind of worried about Fiendsmiths being a thing. Uh, two Ghost Tucker. This is one of the hand traps that can actually impact your deck a lot, because like, if they pop the right card, you know, um, you basically just lost one of your most important materials. Nip definitely hurts my deck if uh, someone's main decking that. So it's like, I just want to be woefully prepared for that. Uh, two Ghost Mourners are the artwork and rarities don't match. Uh, I didn't want to dig through my bulk for, to find the rest. But um, yeah, Ghost Mourner is pretty good. It's just another version of Effect Veiler. If anything, I like this one a little bit better. So I might swap Veiler for these into the main. Uh, Double Cosmic and Heart Beast Feather Duster. Uh, the Cosmics, I've been playing those a little bit more simply because, you know, field spells are a thing and you definitely just want to try to get rid of them as quick as you can. And actually, funny enough, in the Snake Eye matchup, if you uh, banish the uh, equipped card, or the ones that are treated as continuous spells, rather, um, yeah, it's a good way just to get rid of them for good, you know? And finally, uh, three copies of D-Barrier, just to deal with, like, any Synchro, Fusion, or Ritual-based deck. So, like, yeah, like, for Ubel, call Fusion. For the, uh, for the Tempai, call Synchro. And there's going to be a lot of Synchro decks, too, so that's another thing. Heck, now that I think about it, Fiendsmith also used some Fusion, so, yeah, you could use that against them, too. But, anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you guys again next time.